Well, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is Rick Schisler, and I am your host for the weekly business hour. I'm also a Silver Fox advisor and the founder of OneBestConsult.com, places where you can go and get help for you and your small business. First of all, let's recognize our sponsor, which is OneBestConsult.com. That's the number one, BestConsult.com. That's where you find common sense business advice from our business community. Ask you a quick question. When was the last time you asked for and were given some common sense business advice? Think about that for a moment. And if it's been a long time or never, uh, either you were afraid to ask the question or you ask a question, you get a long run out answer that really is not applicable to your business, then go to that website. Uh, Join our community there because we ask questions of each other. And if you need some professional mentoring or advice, I'm there as well. It's what I do for a living and have done for the last 15 years. I mentor small businesses. So please join our community at one, the number one, bestconsult.com. And as we get started today, that reminder, we're on Facebook Live. All you need to do is go to Facebook and log into the weekly business hour. It's right there, the information. You can pick us up and listen to us on Facebook Live. Also during the show, last but not least, if you got a question, a comment uh, about your business even, if it's not even about the show or what we're doing, please send me an email. Just send it to onebestconsult at gmail.com. Love to hear from folks. I hear from people all week. And, but during the show, again, if you have a question about what we're talking about, anything that you want a quick answer, perhaps we can get it on the show. And at this point, I've got a great encouragement for you. Sit back, grab your pad and pencil, and get ready to take notes as we talk about everything business right here on the Weekly Business Hour. And back for a third time, uh, I want to re-welcome, if you will, our special guest, Terry Weaver of the Vell Institute, the Veterans Entrepreneur Leadership Institute. He's back in the final Soups to Nuts conversation on building your leadership philosophy. Terry, welcome to the show again. Thanks, Rick. I appreciate it. Well, I think you've got a great summary put together. I was looking through the notes and the information you sent me, and I encourage everybody, pay close attention and take some notes. Uh, There's some great information here. And Terry, let's jump into it. Uh, Perhaps a quick rehash of what we covered so far and then straight into today's topic. Yeah, we first talked, our our first segment was about um, making the decision to lead. And and the first question that everybody has to ask themselves is, what will people say if I do something? If If I lead or if I start a business or if I move into a leadership role? And if you can answer that question, then you're ready to move forward. If you can't answer that question, um, then, then you may not move into that leadership role. We talked about uh, the man in the arena, that, that, uh, that statement from Teddy Roosevelt, where he talks about the leader is really the man in the arena, and he's not afraid of the criticism. He says uh, critics are many, and he's not worried about what people who are in the stands who are saying who are saying things about him. He, he knows that he's in the arena and he'd rather be there than be in the stands. That's what the leader says, essentially. He, the leader isn't, uh, isn't afraid of stepping out and moving forward. So once you've decided if you're going to lead something, then you start to develop a leadership philosophy. You start to determine what your values are, what you'll say uh, yes to, what you'll say no to. This is an operating system for a leader. And the reason every leader should develop one of these is because we need to prepare so when an opportunity to lead hits us, we're ready. That's what uh, Abe Lincoln says. He says, if you prepare, just continue to prepare. When an opportunity strikes, we'll be ready. So we prepare a leadership philosophy so when we get into the, these tough situations that require leadership, we're ready to, to, to make progress. Well, and you, know, you made a real impression on me with that first show and the second show as well, but the fact that we're all, all of us, everyone listening to this program is a leader and has the potential to be a leader, not just in your business, your business owner, but in your church, and most importantly, in your family. And so what we're talking about really, really covers a lot of ground. Well, let's talk about the things today. I mean, the, you mentioned or call it the core of a leader. Yeah. And I think the understanding the core is obviously important for anybody who wants to polish up their game, so to speak, and become a better, stronger leader. So let's talk with the core of a leader. Lead that discussion off, if you would. Sure. I'd like to start with a couple quotes. But before that, when we strip everything down, if I strip everything down, what I realize is all I have is myself 
to interact with this world with, right? Um, I can't control anybody else, but if I focus, I can control myself. So we have to really step outside of ourselves, take a good hard look at who we are, what we value, and then invest in ourselves because we're the only ones that we can control. We're the only instrument that we can control. Uh, Stephen Covey has a good quote. He says, the single most powerful investment we can ever make in life is an investment in ourselves because it's the only instrument we have with which to deal with life and to contribute, okay? We're the only instrument that we have to deal with life. So if we're not investing in ourselves right now, currently, we need to fix that. We can't grow and affect other people without investing in ourselves. Another good quote from the Dalai Lama, hang with me. He says, to, uh, to be aware of a single shortcoming within yourself is far more useful than being aware of a thousand in someone else. Why is that? Because we can do something about that single shortcoming within ourselves. We can't do that. We can't do anything about the thousands out there. And they're out there. So if we invest in ourselves, invest in our core, then we can make a difference. That's very important to understand. So what, what we've done with Vell Institute is defined what we call the core of a leader, the core of a leader, these different parts of our core. And we've defined six areas. You've heard of the mind, body, and soul. Well, we extend it. So we've got the physical, the mental, the spiritual, the emotional, the creative, and our purpose. Those six areas determine the core of a leader. Let's talk about the physical to start off with because that drives a lot of what we do. If we, if we don't take care of ourselves, we can't take, a, take care of anybody else. You've heard that before, right? So really the physical is all about balance and accountability. We gotta have balance in our life, in our physical life, to be able to do anything. And, we're, and our physical body is accountable to these other areas of ourselves. So our physical body is accountable to our mental and our spiritual and our creative and our purpose. We need our body because it's a vehicle for us to work in, right? Um, there's a concept called sharpening the saw in Stephen Covey's book, book, The Seven Habits. And he talks about uh, these two people who get in a, they're two, uh, uh, they, uh, they're in, in the wood industry. Um, and, and there's a contest that's being held. And there's a tree and they say, they say, they get these two people prepared and they say, we're gonna have a contest who can chop down this tree quickest. You've probably heard this story. One of them goes, grabs the ax and starts hacking away at the tree. The other one sits down and sharpens his saw for an hour and a half and then starts hacking away at the tree. Can you imagine how the story goes? The one who sat down to sharpen his saw ended up winning the race and it's because he took time to sharpen himself. That's what the story is all about. It's metaphorical. So we have to sharpen ourselves before we can go out and help others and serve and lead. If I'm not well, I can't help anybody period. That's the body. The mental is another area. Learning and curiosity is what we believe make up the mental portion of our core. You got to be a curious person. You got to wonder what else is out, what else out there is, is there to learn. And you got to be a continual learner. There's a quote by a Marine. His name's Frosty Westering. It says, either we're green and growing or we're ripe and rotting. It's very black and white. Either we're green and growing or we're ripe and rotting. And I would ask all the listeners to ask yourself, have you stalled? Have you plateaued? Are you green and growing? Are you continuing to learn and invest in yourself? Or are you ripe and rotting? A, a very similar quote is, there's only one way to uh, coast downhill. Or there's only one way to coast, and that's downhill. So once you start coasting, you automatically begin going downhill. You have to be proactive. You have to be a learner. And you got to be curious. Any questions on those areas? Well, you know, it's 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 funny. You start with, and I say funny, I think it's it's very much on point. You start with the physical well-being. Uh, you and I were talking before the show. I had bronchitis and coughing, and at a point sometime early this morning, I said, gosh, I can't do my show because physically I just can't cough. And, you know, and I, so I set about taking medication, doing some things, do a little meditating, trying to get control of that cough. And to me, that's just a small example. My job today happens to be, do this show, and I encourage people the, the physical well-being of yourself and constantly be working regardless of whether you're tall, short, fat, skinny, whatever. I'm not into all that. I think that gets carries people away. The key is you're doing the most with what you have. 
sharpening your saw. Absolutely. Physically, of course, that naturally leads into the mental side as well. But I think too often people miss the physical side. They really don't understand that they really need to sharpen their saw, not someone else's, not someone they've got to, I want to be like so-and-so, and if I don't get there, I'm not. No, you're, you sharpen your saw. You get to be the best you can within the body that the good Lord's given you, and then you're prepared and ready to move forward and be that leader. I love to talk about the mental as well. I think the analogy of green and growing or, or ripe and rotting, I'd never heard it put quite that way, uh, but the mental picture's fantastic. Yeah. Let's talk about the spiritual. I mean, that was the next value you, you mentioned. Tell us a little bit what your your perspective is on the spiritual and why it's so important. Yeah, one quick note on the mental side before we move. Um, an investment in knowledge pays the best interest. Benjamin Franklin said that. Benjamin Franklin was a, an incredibly brilliant man, an inventor, very creative person. And he says the best investment we, we can make is an investment in knowledge. That pays the most dividends. Okay, that's the mental component. The spiritual side. Now, whether you're an atheist or a Christian or a Buddhist or a Muslim, this comes down, this really this question about the spiritual aspect of our core comes down to two things. And I think it's said best by Albert Einstein. He says either everything's a miracle or nothing's a miracle. Very binary outlook on the spiritual aspect. Either everything's a miracle or nothing's a miracle. So we have to... We have to answer the self, uh, the question inside ourselves for ourselves. Either we come from primordial ooze, or we come from a great creator. That's the question we pose to ourselves when we begin to think about this spiritual aspect that everybody ultimately has to answer. So, if we're going to agree that we were made from a creator versus coming out of primordial ooze, then we have to develop our spiritual core. If our answer to that question is yes, we came from a great creator and everything comes from everything, and miracles truly do exist, then we have to develop our spiritual core. And you can do that through all types of disciplines. And it's, it's a missing link for a lot of people. You know, and I, and I think it's, it's obviously discussing the spiritual aspect could take on many, many hours of discussion. That's right. But I love the fact that you have to address it and make that basic decision. Believe it or not, Terry, we're already at our first break. So, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to stop the conversation just for a moment. We're going to take a break, and we come back, we're going to continue going through these cores because uh, I really feel they have a lot to offer. Hope you're making notes, so please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Lone Star Community Radio is ready for the summer. If you or anyone you know is looking for a summer internship, Lone Star Community Radio is a great place to learn the radio and TV business. Contact the station at info at IRLoneStar.com or call the station's message line at 936-647-3776. Lone Star Community Radio offers a great opportunity to those interested in learning about the radio world. An estimated 1 in 10 births will result in a neonatal intensive care stay, also known as the NICU. Overnight, a family can find themselves and their newborn baby in a critical situation. The Mila Foundation financially and spiritually assists families in need. If you would like to volunteer or become a monthly sponsor, please visit us at www.themilafoundation.org. Again, that's www.themilafoundation.org, because every life matters. Listen in Mondays at noon to hear Conroe news from local nonprofits, businesses, upcoming events, Conroe Park events, news stories, and information that matters to you with your host, Margie Taylor of Taylorized PR. For more information about being a guest, visit IRLoneStar.com slash Conroe Culture. Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez president of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas, on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. You're listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schistler, your host. 
And we're here in the middle of a soup to nuts conversation talking about leadership philosophy with Terry Weaver, who is the head of the Vell Institute. Well, Terry, when we went to break, uh, we were talking about the spiritual aspect as one of the core values that you and your group uh, hold out is so important. Uh, we agreed, I think, the spiritual aspect, we could have discussions for hours and hours. Uh, so why don't we get back on track and, and talk a little bit about the next one, uh, the emotional, which to me is a great a great way to move from spiritual to the emotional. Yeah, these this emotional area is super important. It's very important. We believe that it's comprised of a couple different areas, our vulnerability and our integrity. So when I, when I say that, when, I, when we talk about vulnerability or emotional quotient or emotional IQ, essentially what we're talking about is the ability to sense emotions and deal with them, whether that's in ourself or in others. That's emotional intelligence. And this emotional aspect to our leadership is hugely important. Sometimes we can get so wrapped up in the numbers and the metrics and the pro formas and everything else that comes with business and leadership that we can skip over the most important part. And we talked about that in the first segment, our people. They're, our people are the most important part. They're the, they're the secret sauce to any business or any venture, any team. They're the secret sauce. So we have to continually develop our emotional core, the emotional core of a leader. The integrity piece of that, piece of that, a good, a good, like we talked about it earlier, a good uh, uh, reminder of what integrity is. It really is being the same person at all times. We can't switch hats when we go home and when we go to work and when we go to church. Integrity is all about being the same person at all times. A very good book for developing emotionally, developing our vulnerability, which is really strength is a book called Daring Greatly by Brene Brown. You should get that and read it. It's incredible. Um, a lot of people sense and believe that vulnerability is weakness. I just had a meeting this morning with a young lady who's going through some tough stuff. And she says that she's used to handling her emotions and problems with life on her own. And I said, I want to question that. I want you to think about, about vulnerability and, and asking for help, not as a weakness, but as a strength. Because if I try to deal with everything that I have to deal with emotionally and I decide that I'm going to do it on my own, I only rely on my strength, my capabilities. But if I reach out to you, then I get to rely on my strength plus your strength. And vulnerability and asking for help is truly a strength. So we have to see it that way. Well, you know, I think that is one of the most interesting uh, changes that I believe we've seen in American society is over a period of time of the last, I don't know, 10, 20 years or longer is the acceptance in general by men that they need to be vulnerable. I mean, it, it started out where we need not to be afraid to cry, uh, which is an action of vulnerability, but I think it's in our heart to be vulnerable. I think it makes us more open. I think it leads to us being wiser, which to me the ultimate goal is wisdom anyway. Uh, and, the, and the idea that emotionally I open myself up, it's almost like another aspect of being a good listener, That's right. of opening up the senses. And so to become a great leader in all aspects of my life, I need to make myself vulnerable. Yep. I love that. That's right. What else do we have? So this, this aspect, uh, it's a fifth aspect of the core of a leader, I believe, is creativity. Now, you'll hear people say, well, I'm not that creative, and I just don't have the creativity uh, bug, or, or I don't have the ability to be creative, and that's untrue. Everybody is born with creativity. It comes from our creator. And I heard this amazing quote, this amazing quote two years ago. It was from a German creativity specialist. He said, we are most like God when we're creating. We're most like God when we're creating. Why is that? Well, God's the greatest creator of all time, and he's put creativity in us. As a matter of fact, there's a scripture in 1 Peter 4, 10. It says, each of us was given a special gift so that we can serve others and use our special gifts to help others. These are special creative gifts that each of us were given. So I think this creative aspect is, is neglected, and we almost brush it under the rug because we think that other core aspects of our leadership are superior in some way, and we shouldn't do that. Creativity is hugely, hugely important because we're all different. We were all gifted uniquely. It takes a lot of discipline to create. So two aspects of 
uh, two aspects of creativity. One is you got to be visionary and one, you have to be disciplined. So you got to, you got to think outside of your normal thinking, use your unique gifts, and you have to have discipline to bring these visionary aspects into the physical world. Really cool, really cool stuff. You think like the stereotypical creative person's kind of la la laissez faire, just kind of out sniffing roses, painting paintings. Not true. The true creatives are highly disciplined. They're so disciplined that they spend time working on their creations in a disciplined manner to bring them into the physical world. It's it's a really neat idea when you start to dig into it. Well, you know, it's interesting. They even uh, they they even work harder to make their work even better. And that's part of the creative process. And if you have a doubt about creativity, just look back as, as we're in this period of mourning with the passing of President Bush 41. And that's the one thing that comes through to me in watching some of the history be replayed is he was a very creative man. Mm. And his ultimate objective in life was to serve others. And he did it in such a creative way, depending on the position of where he was in life, not only in public service, but personally, and if you listen long enough, you see that creativity coming through and it's thousand points of light and all these other messages still resonate with people today as they talk about it. So I agree 100% creativity is a huge item in becoming a great leader. So this last area, purpose, I think two keys to purpose. And I believe there's a scripture in Ecclesiastes, Ecclesiastes 3.11. It says, God has put eternity in the hearts of men. Then it goes on to say, we can't truly uncover all that that means, but if we search it, we'll uncover some of it. Two key aspects to purpose. One is transcendence and one is courage. To be purposeful or to have a purpose, you have to realize that the world doesn't, uh, it doesn't uh, spin because of you. You're actually a part of something much bigger than yourself, right? So we have to, we have, to have an idea of transcendence and we have to have the courage to, to seek out that purpose. Once we know that this world, this life is bigger than us, we got to have the courage to go after being a part of something bigger than ourself. Um, we are made for others, period, end of story. People really find out what, how important their meaning is when they grasp that. Uh, when people are born, they need immediate connection with other people, right? If they don't have that, they expire. If you look at the, the worst cases of isolation, we're talking about when people are thrown in uh, solitary confinement in prisons, they expire if they don't have other human contact. They just lose their mind. You watch the, uh, you watch the movie Castaway? Yeah. Uh, you just lose your mind in your, if you're in isolation. That tells me we were born to be in relationship. We're a part of something bigger than ourselves. And if we don't have a connection that's bigger than ourselves, we just we never fully develop. So leaders need to understand that. They're here for somebody else, some other group of people, something bigger than themselves. So that kind of rounds out the core of a leader. Well, I think you've done a wonderful job. I love all the points you've touched on. Uh, and I think the purpose is kind of a great way to wind that up because what I've found in my career, my life, and working with business people is they accept that we're here for a purpose or they're here for a purpose. But I find them a little bit shy, mm -hmm. if you will, to mm -hmm. step up. They remind me of the old story of Jonah and the whale. They just don't want to accept that, hey, my purpose is this, uh, and I'm, I'm equipped, but i got to take that step. So my encouragement to people is don't be afraid to accept your purpose uh, and step into that role and become that great leader that we need you to be. Yeah, so these six core areas, we got physical, mental, spiritual, emotional, creativity, and purpose. There's a recommendation for each of these areas. So when you start to build this leadership philosophy, I want to give everybody a book to look at so they can start building a leadership philosophy if they want to dig into these areas. The first one is the body. There's a book called The Power of Full Engagement that talks about our need to monitor our energy. We got to monitor our energy. It's all about using our instrument, our body, to be the most effective. So check that out. It's called The Power of Full Engagement for the Body. For the mind, there's a book called Mindset by Carol Dweck. And she breaks us into two categories, a closed-minded person or a growth mindset person. Growth mindset person, look at, look at obstacles as opportunities. It's an incredible book. For the spiritual 
side. There's no better book, in my opinion, than the Bible. Everything that I talked about these last three sessions, I could have pulled straight from the scripture, okay? There's other spiritual books out there. That's my best recommendation, though. Um, for the emotional side, we, I mentioned it multiple times because it's such a great book. It's called Daring Greatly by Brene Brown, Daring Greatly. Uh, for the creative side, there's a book called The War of Art, The War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. And then for our purpose, there's an incredible book, the greatest uh, best-selling book of all time outside of the Bible in nonfiction. It's called The Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Have you heard of this? Oh, books? absolutely. Read it. Yeah. So there's some recommendations to start building your leadership framework or your leadership philosophy. Well, you've given us a lot of material. And I encourage people to, if you made notes, I think that's wonderful. I encourage you to re-listen to this broadcast, which, of course, will be posted as a podcast later in the week. But we'll get to that later. Terry, as we wind up here, people, again, they want to reach out to you. They want to further or continue the discussion. What's the best way for them to get in touch with you? Yeah, the best way to get in touch is probably find us on Facebook, Bell Institute. You can just search V-E-L Institute. And what I'm going to do is put together all the links from these shows, and I'll create a handout, and I'll post that on Facebook under Vell Institute. I'll do the same thing on LinkedIn so people can have this resource. And that's why I came on to talk about this is because it's going to help some people. So this is a free gift that we're putting together um, for others to get better. Well, I appreciate that very much. And again, I encourage you folks, if you're listening reach out to Terry in the Vell Institute, the Veterans Entrepreneur Leadership Institute right here in Montgomery County where we're broadcasting from. Doesn't matter whether you're down the street or across the world, you can relate and you can connect electronically. And I encourage you to stay with us on the second half of the show. I'm going to recap our conversation with Terry. I've got a couple general observations and a client story to share. And in Did You Know segment, I'm going to offer you my quick check, please, on the top three behaviors of a successful leader based on my experience and finally, close out the show with my one best consult tip of the week. Ask yourself, what is the purpose of my office? So please stay with us. we got a lot of great information, ideas, and news coming your way, and we'll be right back with you. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com slash sponsor for more information. Or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776 with your question. Get seen on TV or YouTube and heard on our podcast, FM, and Internet Radio. Sponsor your local radio station with Lone Star Community Radio. Are you interested in learning more about preparing quick, healthy, and safe meals for your family? Would you like to spend time with others learning tips and tricks, along with practicing and tasting nutritious food? If so, the On the Road to Healthy Living Mobile Cooking School is for you. Call Amy Ressler at Texas A&M AgriLife Extension Service at 936-539-7825 to find a class near you or volunteer to host a class. Hey guys, this is Connor. This is Dick. This is Chris. And we're with the Ticket Stub Podcast every Thursday live at noon on 104.5 and 106.1 FM in the Conroe area. Also, anytime at IRLoneStar.com. You go to IRLoneStar.com backslash TTS. You can find all of our social media. And don't forget, we give away two tickets to the Grand Theater on every show. If you like movies and you like complaining or celebrating anything that has to do with the silver screen, Check out the Ticket Stub podcast and join us every Thursday at noon o'clock on Lone Star Community Radio. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is Rick Schisler, your host. I'm a Silver Fox advisor and the founder of OneBestConsult.com. And I want to re remind you that OneBestConsult.com is the sponsor of our show, and I thank them for that. That is the number OneBestConsult.com. encourage you to check that website out if you're a small business owner. I think you can find some help there. You can find make some friends in our community, 
And if you want to chat with me a little bit, that's great too, because I offer my professional advisory and mentoring services there as well. Well, I'd like to first recap a little bit of what we've heard. I believe the last three weeks, uh, the last three Mondays, um, Mondays, Terry Weaver Vell Institute has come and given us a, a fantastic blueprint to develop our own leadership philosophy. I recognize that there's a lot of competing material out there. There's lots of opportunities. Uh, and I encourage you, reach out, read the books, attend the seminars, webinars. Uh, but the key thing I want to give as a takeaway really are two things. First of all, is I encourage you to work on this a little bit. Uh, it doesn't need to be an all-consuming thing. You've obviously got a business to run, lots of things to do, lots of balls to juggle. And if you're successful, that's even more so. But the idea is that you understand and accept that I'm a leader. I need to lead my business. I need to lead my family and, and potentially be a leader in my community. And as I said on the first show, this doesn't necessarily mean that you're the center of attention. Uh, humility, I think, plays a large part in this whole uh, program of being a great leader. But I think the idea is that we have to accept the fact and accept the responsibility. We need to be a leader, uh, particularly in our business, our family. And hopefully you'll accept that responsibility to be in your community, your church, other opportunities, because we need leadership. Uh, in our country right now, we see what a lack of leadership truly does, and it creates chaos at a national, international level. And that's what this is all about. If you read, watch the news, it's about leadership. It's about leadership styles. It's about what's going on. I'm not trying to be political, but offer that as encouragement to become the leader you truly are, the leader you were made to be. And the second thing is, the fact is that you're a leader of your business, your family. You're a leader all the time. And Terry did a great job, I think, emphasizing and reemphasizing that. This is not a, a one size fits all. It's not the idea that it's also that, well, I'm a great leader in my business, but I'm a, I don't even think about being a leader of my family. I don't think about offering my ability to lead uh, in, my computer, in my community in one or more places. Uh, I, I don't think that's what it's all about. And I think Terry makes that point real well. Once you're able to develop a, a sound leadership philosophy, practice what you preach, then you are prepared to lead in many, many different aspects of life. And leadership in your family is so critical. Again, many, many examples in our society where a lack of leadership causes catastrophic results within a given family or within a given group of people or a, a city, a town, a community. Uh, just amazing. These are opportunities. And, you know, I think one of the major things that when I interview people and they say, well, I want to start a business. Yes, we talk about passion, but I want to see if the person is the kind of person that sees opportunities. Being a leader is one of those opportunities. Do you see what's important in front of you? Do you see what's important? Do you see the great opportunity to become the great leader that you are already? You just need to work on it. So take those thoughts, think about it, leave you with a thought of an example of a great leader in a community. Jim McInvale, Mattress Mac. Uh, if you live in the Montgomery County area or anywhere near the city of Houston, you've seen Jim, you're aware of what he does in the community. Uh, you can walk into their, their store on the North Freeway because I've done it. He's sitting right up front. He's there running the business, leading. Be glad to talk to you. He's a great example, in my opinion, of a leader right here in front of us. The world is full of thousands of these people. We need to recognize it. And if you haven't already, join the ranks. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, I'm going to offer my did you know comment for the week, my quick checklist, three behaviors that I have found that are needed by successful leaders. So please stay with us. We'll be right back with you. Does volunteering at a nonprofit horse sanctuary sound wonderful? Or are you a veteran or a veteran spouse and think trying a peer group session through a local Horses and Heroes equine program might be worth trying? Henry's Home Horse and Human Sanctuary, located in Grand Central Park by appointment only, is home to a growing number of rescued and donated horses. Visit our website at henryshomehorsesanctuary.org or check out our Facebook at Henry's Home Horse and Human Sanctuary for more information. Our talk shows and music shows are looking for sponsors. Want to expand your brand awareness? Reach the hyper-local audience in Montgomery County? Lone Star Community Radio sponsorships accomplish this. Want to see our stats and rates? Check out IRLoneStar.com sponsor for more information. 
or call in and leave us a message at 936-647-3776. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show with monthly and weekly slots available in Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the station message line at 936-647-3776 to take your first step into the radio world. Hispanic Chamber Connections with Dr. Carlos Sanchez president of the Woodlands Conroe Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, featuring event announcements, member highlights, and more. Tuesdays at 1 p.m., broadcasting from the heart of Conroe, Texas, on IRLoneStar.com and Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. This is Rick Schisler, your host of the Weekly Business Hour, and thank you for joining us today, and Hope you enjoyed my summary and comments on leadership philosophy and building your own leadership. And again, thank you to our great friend, Terry Weaver of the Vell Institute for coming and being with us the past three weeks. I hope that you will use again this opportunity to work on your leadership. I'd like to talk about leadership now for the next two or three minutes from the perspective of the three behaviors that I personally have learned, and there are lots of them, but the three top behaviors that I've learned to look for when I'm trying to identify or assist someone to improve their leadership skills. The first one is, and it's an old expression, uh, may have heard it from your parents or uh, an uncle or granddad or somebody, uh, but that is do what you say you're going to do. You know, that my father would drill that in us. Uh, if I say I'm going to go cut the lawn after school, then do it. And ultimately that became there was no excuse. So that he wanted us to learn, particularly in business, that we could look people in the eye and say, gosh, I'm going to do it. And people believed you and they wanted you to be on their team. They wanted to buy from you. They wanted a relationship with you. But the key is do what you want, no matter if it's a small thing or a big thing. And I think that's where some people kind of slip off the, off the wagon, so to speak. They don't realize the small things. They promise to call somebody back. They promise to, to get in touch uh, with someone. They promise to deliver something and they forget I mean, I'm reaching an age where we forget things sometimes, but it's really not acceptable if, in fact, you want to be the great leader that you need to be in your business. So the key is be sure you set a good example all the time in in what you're going to do and you do it because that's how we build trust. That's how we build relationships. The second area is setting a good example, which kind of flows from that idea that I'm going to do what I say I'm going to do. Because think about it, if I'm in my business and I have three, five, 300, 500 employees, or I have vendors or I have customers and they see me doing what I say I'm going to do every day. They see me come to work dressed and ready to go to work. They see me open the door at the same time every day on time. So in case they show up right at the opening time or maybe even a few minutes early, they see me stay late at night to finish something that needs to go out the next morning, on and on and on. This is what a good example is. People see it, particularly employees. Employees are always, always watching. And I've found some people that I've worked with as owners of small business, well, they pick up on the negative. You know, they said that my employees, they, they look for me to fail. They, I, you know, I really don't believe that. I'm not saying there's a personality or two that may do that kind of thing, but they're really looking for success. Think about it, leadership. You are causing people to be better than they are by being a great leader. So if I set a good example every day, day in, day out, what am I going to do? I'm going to cause the people around me, and in this case, our business, to be even better than they are now. It's a great win-win. And that leads into the third area, giving off positive energy. Be a positive person. When you come to work, be positive. You might have had a terrible, terrible uh, morning. Something may have happened. Something's not going your way. Uh, Who knows what it might be? but always be positive when you're amongst others. And this includes our family. This includes our community, but really, really important in your business. Be positive when you talk to people. Show that example. Show the fact that you're going to do what you say you're going to do, and you're going to smile. It's infectious. And again, you will lift up your people. 
Well, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to take our final break of the day. When we come back, I'm going to offer you uh, what I think is a very, very interesting one best consult tip of the week, and that is asking the question, what is the purpose of your office? So please stay with us through the break, and we'll be right back with you. What is homelessness? Have you seen parents struggle to find a job without having transportation or childcare? What about the children sleeping in cars with nothing to eat? Families shouldn't have to struggle to survive and children should not be homeless. Family Promise of Montgomery County serves the needs of homeless families and their children. Learn about ways you can help and learn about partnership opportunities at www.familypromiseofmc.org or call our day center at 936 941-8778. Lone Star Community Radio is looking for those who are interested in hosting their own talk show. With monthly and weekly slots available on Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1, and on IRLoneStar.com. Start your own podcast, create your first YouTube channel, and be on TV. Contact Lone Star Community Radio online at IRLoneStar.com or call the message line at 936-647-3776 to take your first step into the radio world. For those of you who like your partners, your gumbo, and your music salty, well, we're here to help with the music. Julian Shea here, host of Lone Star Country Nights Thursday your weekly dose of roots and Americana and all the music that makes this part of the country special. We stir in western swing, honky-tonk, Zydeco, Texas blues, outlaw country, and put a pinch of red dirt, and then we smoke it over a slow fire. Then listen to the results Thursday nights on Conroe's 104.5 and 106.1 and worldwide at IRLoneStar.com. Don't forget to download the Lone Star Community Radio app from your Google Play or Apple Store. Bring Montgomery County's Community Radio with you anywhere with your smartphone or tablet. If you are in the Conroe area, tune in on FM. That's Conroe's FM 104.5, 106.1. If you are on the computer, bookmark IRLoneStar.com as your internet radio station. A Lone Star Community Radio. Broadcasting 24-7 from the heart of downtown Conroe, Texas. You are listening to the Weekly Business Hour, and this is our final segment today. And gosh, I'm Rick Schisler, your host. Hope you've enjoyed the program to this point. We're kind of towards the end of the program, and this is where I offer my one best consult tip of the week. And this week, I want to pose a question to you. Uh, This may seem a little strange, but I want you to ask yourself, what is the purpose of your office? Okay. Now, the first thing that probably pops into your head, well, I have an office. It's a retreat. It's a place where I meet with people privately, uh, so on and so forth. A lot of different reasons. That's not really what I'm looking for. I'm not looking for the location uh, of the office that you have the corner uh, versus this or that, or that you have rules, uh, your office like a gatekeeper. If somebody wants to see you, they have to seek the permission of the gatekeeper, uh, open door policy, all those things you work out of what fits your personality. But what I really want to challenge us to talk about just for a few minutes today in the time we have left is talk about what alternatives are to my office? And, and, and I'll be a little bit broad and, and be with stick with me a little bit on this because I'm really trying to be a little bit thought-provoking, if that makes sense. What better alternatives to the current office situation? Again, not the color of the wall paint or the carpet or the location of the building, would serve me as a business leader and the company better. Now, over the years, we've heard many, many uh, people address through articles, uh, conversations, about the best office setup, you know, the open concept, uh, you know, uh, put my desk on the shop floor, a lot of great ideas and so on and so forth out there. But I think what happens to many of us, we start a business, uh, maybe initially we had a little table and a chair. I've done that. That was my office. It wasn't very private. 
If I needed to have a private uh, conversation, I went next door down the street to a coffee shop, whatever. It worked. I mean, uh, so many businesses start now in people's homes uh, or as Hewlett Packard started in a garage. I mean, and, and that's great. And that's sort of out of necessity. And I think the necessity, the old expression, is the mother of in, in, uh, invention really plays true today. And again, what I'm trying to do is get you to take a look at your current situation and see if it's the very, very best for you and your business, because it may be time for you to kind of reset if you can gain some real strategic advantages out of it in operating your business and taking your business through the growth mode, my assumption that you're trying to grow your business uh, by motivating the company, its vendors, its customers, uh, and most particularly your employees about how you perceive and how you implement your office itself. I mean, one thing real quick, uh, the idea that a gatekeeper uh, controls access to you, that's one that's become very sensitive. Uh, the open door thing that was around for a long time, uh, management by wandering around, all these things kind of come and go. And I do believe it's a personal thing. It's personal to each of us. But I think sometimes we get in that office and it kind of becomes a fortress, if you will, against the rest of the world. And the next thing you know, it just becomes harder and harder for us to get out of it and in some cases for people to get in. I was reading, I think, a wonderful story, uh, what I consider a wonderful story, true story, recent story, uh, by Jeff uh, Berkovich. Uh, he's the San Francisco bureau chief for Inc. Magazine. It's about a company called NIN Vision. Uh, it's a, basically a software company. Uh, they design software to help communications in large companies, and they've been very successful. And a measure of their success is that they had 500 employees a year ago. Today, they have 800 employees. The company's been valued because it's not publicly held at over a billion dollars. And necessity caused the founder of that company, Clark Valberg, to adopt a philosophy and put in place as part of their business plan, their strategic plan, that there really wouldn't be any offices at all. Now, we've gone from having an office as a palace, as a fortress, all the way down the scale is there's no office at all. Uh, and this was born out of necessity, uh, according to this article, and the fact that they had to hire a lot of programmers, right? They're in a software business. And when he looked at the market opportunities, and he took the, the entire country, he looked in California, he looked on the East Coast in New York, there were software, there were programmers, software programmers available, but their cost, the cost to hire them uh, was huge because in, in, the, in the West Coast, you have Silicon Valley and naturally drives up the price. And in the East, you have New York City. A recent example, uh, a f a recent example uh, is Amazon relocating offices to the New York City area, to the Washington, D.C. area. Uh, those people are going to look for programmers. So the labor pools in the East and West Coast were very expensive, and there were shortages even then developing several years ago when he started his company. So he started to find pockets like Wichita, Kansas, and other places where there were programmers. And when he did the math and developed his business plan, he and his associates, they determined they could pay twice as much as those markets were now paying and still be way below what was being paid on the East West Coast. But then they started analyzing how to locate offices and so on and so forth and really took off on a new trail and says, we'll hire people, we'll build a model, which has been done before, where everybody works from home or they work out of their own facility and we all developed this team communication because they were building a product that helps teams communicate, right? So they're going to use their own product and I'm sure some other tools. But the idea of the necessity. So they built this really successful company and there literally is no office. Now, I'm sure they've got a mailing address somewhere and I'm sure there's a place somewhere in the United States, the article really didn't touch on it, where they go to meet. But even the vice president of operations, he works out of an Airstream trailer. And people don't really know where he is. He travels. But the company's been extremely, extremely successful doing this. Now, don't misunderstand. This is not for everybody, but it can work. So use this example. Stimulate your own thinking. Make sure your office is the right place, the right time for your business. Well, ladies and gentlemen, thank you again so, so much for listening to us today. I hope you'll make a note on your calendar to join us next week uh, at 11 o'clock on Monday. Uh, we're going to start a new Soup to Nuts series next week. And in that one, we're going to talk uh, with Randy Morton. She's the head of Better Bookkeepers here in the Montgomery County area. Of course, we're going to be talking about everything bookkeeping, uh, but we're going to talk about how that's so important to small businesses 
uh, in operation of their business, to have the right numbers in front of you so you can use them uh, when you need them to build your business. So please make plans to join us again next week. And until then, I encourage you very much so, focus on what's important in your business and stay focused on what counts in your business. Do that each and every day and you are on the road to success. So thank you again. We'll see you next week. In the meantime, take care. Thank you.